So before we go into all the psychological and spiritual work components, let's just get it out there. The houses in heaven are really beautiful. We've got a long, proud tradition here on Earth of house watching shows from the mighty MTV Cribs in the 90s to Netflix's The World's Most Extraordinary Homes to Escape to the Country and on and on. So we think some homes in this world are pretty cool. I'm actually standing on the top floor of a museum that used to be a house. And Swedenborg ran in the circles of the nobility so he would have seen all the palaces and things in his day. And his message was, and I'm paraphrasing, if we were making a best of houses show that included heaven, nothing in the whole world would make the cut. He wrote, I have seen palaces in heaven that were so splendid as to be beyond description. Their upper stories shone as though they were made of pure gold and their lower ones as though they were made of precious gems. Each palace seemed more splendid than the last. It was the same inside. The rooms were graced with such lovely adornments that neither words nor the arts and sciences are adequate to describe them. On the side that faced south, there were parklands where everything sparkled in the same way. Here and there, the leaves like silver and the fruits like gold, while the flowers in their beds made virtual rainbows with their colors. On the horizon of sight, there were other palaces that framed the scene. The architecture of heaven is like this, so that you might call it the very essence of the art and small wonder, since the art itself does come to us from heaven. The art or the essence of architecture itself comes to us from heaven. So obviously there's gonna be beauty in the surroundings, but look at this comment on the way this beauty is processed. Angels tell me that things like this and countless others even more perfect are presented to their view by the Lord, but that such sights actually delight their minds more than their eyes, because they see correspondences in the details. And through their correspondences, they see things divine. So it's not even that, you know, the tile in the kitchen is nice, but that the real power is in everything representing God or the divine. And it's not just Swedenborg describing these palaces and how heaven might have been. Back in the 18th century, there's all kinds of modern accounts from people who have had their own spiritual experiences. I saw that I had a house made entirely of rubies. These precious stones were affixed to the walls in the hundreds of thousands to millions. I saw that I have a very pleasant home in the realm. It actually has a flowing stream that moves through the house and into a lovely lush floral garden in the back. I saw that the furniture was very similar to what we have here on earth, only more round and simplistic with much more cushion. Comfy heaven chairs, which is awesome. And so everything sounds pretty good, right? But there's two potential issues to clear up. One, are those houses right for me? What if I don't want some big palace? And two, what's so angelic about having a big house in the first place? Don't we see on the news there's all kinds of dictators and crime bosses that have these really extravagant living situations. You can have a really selfish mind inside an opulent estate, but in heaven, that's impossible because the mind is the house. Rather than having some external building built that does or doesn't reflect who you are, your house in heaven is a direct reflection of your mind. So that also solves our problem back in number one. It doesn't have to be opulence. It's what fits your mind the best. Swedenborg describes some of the highest angels actually living in tents. There's this whole spectrum of housing complexity and tastes. So you're not gonna be stuck in some stuffy situation that you don't like.